Hello, this is Darren DePaul, the voice of Emperor Valkorion, and you're watching another video by Valk. Greetings, my friends. Today is 27th of November, one day before the big release to Star Wars The Old Republic Game Update 5.6, which brings new story, new content for both PvE and PvP, and a ton of fixes, plus a new group finder and a new cartel market item. How about we take a look at the patch notes? It's something I do every Monday when we have patch notes, at least um, noticeable patch notes. The list is quite large, but this is only because the third point is classes and combat. And in 5.6, as you probably already know, Bioware is adjusting a ton of things to pretty much all classes. Jedi Knight, uh, Seat Warrior, Jedi Consul, Inquisitor, Smuggler, Agent, Bounty Hunter and Trooper. All of them are receiving various changes to some of their disciplines. Not everything has been changed for good or for bad. I do have a few videos uh, discussing namely the combat incarnate changes as well as the uh, commando and mercenary changes uh, for 5.6 for, for 5 because these are some of the classes that interest me the most and because Bauer released the whole list at the same time and, and I thought it would be weird if I publish several videos uh, in the following days. So never mind. That's not really important. Let's start with the highlights. I will be reading on the screen just like I do every single time. This isn't a gameplay video. You probably know if you're visiting my live my, <laughs> my YouTube channel for the first time. This is what I do. Overview and uh, analysis of the patch notes. First highlight, new flashpoint. The traitor Teron Shan has found asylum on the cheese world of Copero. Lead a covert strike to undercover his deadly plans before it's too late. Yep, it's revealing, but not revealing too much, this one sentence here. Third boss for the not-so-new operation on Iocat, Gods from the Machine, is now available as well. Nahut, I think, or Nahut, I'm not really sure how it's pronounced, but we'll know soon enough. The Son of Shadow is available in uh, story mode and veteran mode. Then again, new galactic starfighter map. As promised, Bioware delivered in the previous uh, patch a ton of changes uh, and optimizations to the godforsaken and forgotten uh, galactic starfighter uh, part of the game. And now they bring us a whole new map, 12 versus 12 pl players, just like um, the others. And uh, we're expecting a war zone, fortunately, due to, I guess, polishing and bug clearing up issues. The war zone has been actually uh, delayed for 5.6.1, uh, I believe. Well, two weeks, actually. It's been delayed for two weeks, so whatever date it is, I think it's 12th of December. The activities window is now the old group finder. The old group finder interface has been has seen a huge overhaul. This includes repeatable rewards, bonuses for roles in need, along with unifying the group, Warzone, Galactic Starfighter, and solo content into a single window. You can obviously expect tomorrow a video from me overviewing all of these changes because this is quite big and uh, I don't want to get into details because we're just about to uh, talk about the, the uh, patch notes in this video. We'll talk more about these gameplay changes and new features tomorrow when we are, when I actually can show you a uh, live picture uh, behind me and talk on it. The Master's Datacron is the cartel market item. I do have a video and... Um, Bioware posted uh, a few days ago a blog post overviewing this item. Its price will be 2,000 cartel coins, just like the price of the other uh, tokens for level 60 and level 65. The difference here is that this can be applied to any character, new or old. It doesn't matter as long as it's not level 70. And it will boost that said character on which it's used to level 70 without progressing and locking any story for you. That's the unique uh, stuff, as well as giving you a bundle of uh, starter level 70 and game gear. How good is it? Uh, we'll actually talk about that again in another video or maybe during the live stream tomorrow. Maybe that's a good moment before I jump into the general section of the patch notes. Um, I would like to invite all of you guys, if you're watching this video before the live stream has happened, as soon as the servers go live, provided nothing wrong happens with me or with the servers and with the patch, tomorrow on 28th of November, there is a live stream happening. It's become a tradition for me and for many of you now. Uh, tomorrow we actually have new content, the new Flashpoint and the story 
I will play through all of that uh, for you guys and with you um, for the uh, Empire and Republic point of view. We'll discuss all the changes. I'll show you things that have been improved or introduced as new into the game. We'll talk about the augments a little bit later on in this video now. Let's jump into the general section. Due to the amount of changes being made to Group Finder, many group missions will have their progress reset. So, yeah, don't, don't fret too much. Those won't be uh, major uh, important missions. And uh, no mission in Star Wars The Old Republic is too long, so you'll be able to catch up quickly and easily enough. The next paragraph is specifically changes about the group finder and the fact that it has been uh, renamed to activities window. It has received numerous uh, updates, repeatable rewards, role in need rewards, and uh, what else? Solo window where you can see all the heroics and daily areas and stuff like that and lockouts. So several windows that you know from the uh, from 5.5 and before existing in the game have been combined into one new window. This is actually very useful and very cool. I really hope that the new version of the group finder will finally bring some life into this too because while it's interesting and certainly easier to pick up a group on the fleet and then jump to group finder uh, when you have four people for flashpoint or eight people for an operation, I have been missing for all these years the, uh, the opportunity to be able to just click a button, queue for something, and then jump straight and do it. I don't know if the new group finder will provide that. I have a uh, highly doubt because operation groups will keep will still be formed probably on the fleet, just like they have been for years. Let's see next. Characters across the galaxy now have an appropriate amount of sparkle in their eyes. Oh, really? That's a, that's a nice role-playing um, version of the fix that many of you I know have been asking for for a long time. Solo activities such as Heroic Missions, Soul Flashpoint and the Eternal Championship have been added to the activities window. They will populate, uh, they will populate based on your character level, which is nice because you don't need to see uh, content that your character is not capable of uh, joining and participating in. Queuing for ranked and unranked war zones will now happen via the activities window. Yet again, another window, which is the PvP queue window from the minimap, you know, the little icon, have been merged into the new activities window, which is actually good. Uh, it's um, a combining activity window, kind of like the um, Galactic Command window was uh, since 5.0. The rewards for completing content via the activities window have been increased. Corrected various issues related to searching in the cartel market. Defeating the hood has been added to the gods from the machine objectives for conquest. And you can obviously expect the weekly to have been changed uh, for this operation because we have three bosses now available. And to finish the weekly, you have to finish uh, to kill all three bosses, uh, respectively, on story mode or veteran mode. A new option has been added to the preferences window under user interface cartel market called the use pack viewer. This option is on by default. If the player turns it off when a cartel market pack is opened, the items will be placed directly in your item stash without the pack viewer animation being played. I don't know if this is good or bad. Probably uh, the cartel pack opening junkies would be uh, happy to see this implemented because that would save them time. I personally open cartel packs extremely rarely and I don't mind watching that weird animation. I'm actually going to completely skip all of the changes to class and combat because there are so many and it will take me probably just an hour to go through all of these alone and only for the classes that I'm actually capable of talking about because I can't really explain the changes to all the classes since I don't actively play all of them. But anyway, if we keep scrolling through all of this, like three quarters of the patch notes are actually about the classes and uh, combat changes. We arrive at the flashpoint and operation changes. Only a few bullet points. The command experience earned from Hammer Station has been nerfed to all difficulties, bringing this flashpoint in line. So it means that there is a chance when you queue up for a random flashpoint in Group Finder, you may actually jump into something different than Hammer Station, because everybody else will be actually queuing up for something different than the Hammer Station. I don't know, that sounds good to me. The group Pound from the Vixen Mauler uh, in Crisis on Umbara now has a description if a player mouses over the debuff. We'll talk about that description probably tomorrow, because I'll be able to show you the, uh, the debuff. 
and the changes for operations. The unassemble components earned for killing operation bosses has been increased. Bauer has not mentioned here for one reason or another how much they have increased. I don't know why, they usually are more specific or lately they've been more specific with these in, in, um, notes and with the information regarding what has changed how, but anyway. A couple of bullet points for Galactic Starfighter, which you can pause the video and read them or you can open the patch notes, of course the full patch notes are available in the video description. And we arrive at items and economy. There are quite a few interesting things here. Let's start with the first one. When adding an augment slot to an item, the augment kit drop-down box will now sort by whichever kit the player has highest quality of. This is a huge quality of life improvement to Autoholics because placing 14, I believe, was the total amount of augments available on one character. And every time you have to scroll down to see the, the highest tier available because nobody really places tier 1 augments. If you do, you're doing it wrong, you shouldn't. Next one, command boost that drop from command crates no longer have a restriction, a restriction excuse me, on what command ranks they apply to, which means you will be free to use that on whatever rank you want. Items that are linked in chat will now show their rarity alongside their name. Very cool fix. Not fix, actually. Quality of life improvement, I should probably call it. <clears throat> A few decorations have been added to the mission rewards for uh, doing solo flash points. Two tiers of new augments have been added to the game. The first one is artifact quality rank or item rating, sorry, 230. And it will drop inside of the new flash point on Cupero hasn't been mentioned who drops it is it a random drop or is it every boss or maybe just the last boss but we'll discover that tomorrow and the second one is craftable item rating 236 legendary quality which is that um, gold-ish color uh, these are crafted schematics and they can be learned by the respective crew skill trainer you can expect those to be uh, purchasable for a decent amount of credits and I would have actually expected the uh, the ways you can earn these to be reversed. So Bioware would force more players to jump into the Flashpoint. I don't know why they've decided to make the, the better tier craftable. Probably easy craftable unless the crafting demands a special uh, crafting material which again drops in the Flashpoint or is purchasable, God forbid, from a new vendor attached to um, the new Flashpoint. That hasn't been mentioned yet, I'm just speculating. Improved disintegration. Uh, disintegrating any item that contains stats in the command stash will now result in gaining unassembled components instead of command experience CXP. All other items still disintegrate into CXP. We've made this change to allow for a more robust way of earning the unassembled components to upgrade equipment. This brings increased value to each command crate earned through gameplay. I've seen negative uh, opinions related to this change and I don't know why. Personally, to me, this is really good. The cost of all items... Now, this is the bad part related to the previous bullet point. <laughs> the cost of all items on the unassembled components vendor has been increased. Please note, says Bauer, that the rate players earn unassembled components from existing sources has also been increased at the same rate. This change is to account for the changes to disintegration. Okay, that's a little bit tough for me to uh, digest, but I'll probably need a couple of uh, real examples from the game so I can actually tell how much of a nerf this is to earning unassembled components. The number of unassembled components that each player currently possesses has been increased by the same ratio at the cost increase noted above, which means because Bioware increased all prices to items purchasable with uh, unassembled components, they've also increased with the same factor or the same multiplier the components that you currently own on all of your characters. So basically when you log in tomorrow after the patch goes live, you're not losing anything. Uh, what's next? Unassembled components are no longer found in the currency tab. Instead, they're stackable, bind on legacy item in your inventory. This is one of the biggest and most demanded and loved announcements that Bioware made quite a long time ago, and it is going live with 5.6. The wait is over. The uh, intermittent IOCAT conduit and large IOCAT statue decoration will, longer will no longer show up in the decoration UI as they are not currently available in the game. 
Bye-bye to those. Players can now deposit and withdraw credits from their legacy banks. The second biggest announcement, quality of life improvement, that honestly should have been in the game with uh, patch, what, 1.2? When the legacy system was introduced? I can't remember when it was. But it has been many, many years ago and this feature should have been there. Please note, there is absolutely no mention in the patch notes if this actually affects the uh, limitations for credits for free-to-play, for example. I would imagine not, because the limitation for free-to-play is there to prevent the farmers, the credit farmers, and the spammers to actually be able to accumulate credits without at least paying something to Bioware and to EA. Uh, if that actually is true or not, we will learn tomorrow when the servers go live with everything live and official. Only one change to Warzones, and it's again related to the UC. The unassembled components earned for completing Warzones has been increased, just like everything else, but it was expected. There had to be at least one bullet point for PvP. Remember, 12th of December is uh, 5.6.1, where we are expecting to see the, um, the Warzone, as well as the double event. If you haven't seen the update from earlier today, the double event, the double CXP, XP and everything else event is actually being delayed. It will not launch on 28 with 5.6. Instead, it will launch on 12th of December. And as a bonus or an excuse for the delay, it's actually going to last for 20 days until the end of the year. It will end on 1st of January, 2018. And with this, I wish you good afternoon, good night, and whatever else, depending on your time zone. I hope to see many of you guys on the live stream on Patch Day, 28th of November. The event is already scheduled. You can set your timers and reminders, and you can enjoy the new Flashpoint together with me. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. 